let us solve one more problem using mesh analysis so we have given a circuit and we have been asked to solve this particular circuit using mesh analysis okay so first of all we need to identify the no, uh, meshes so here there are three meshes this is mesh number one this is mesh number two and this is mesh number three so we have identified the meshes so after identifying the meshes mark currents to all the meshes so i am going to mark all the mesh currents in clockwise direction so this will be i1 and current flowing through mesh 2 will be i2 and current through mesh 3 will be i3 so i have chosen three meshes and i have marked current to all the meshes so after marking the currents then consider each of the mesh individually and apply kirchhoff's voltage law so first of all choose mesh 1 so mesh 1 or loop 1 so loop 1 apply kvl to loop 1 so applying kvl to loop 1 I am going to trace the circuit in clockwise direction. So for applying KVL to a particular mesh, we have to trace that particular mesh in a particular direction. So I am going to trace the mesh in clockwise direction and I will be starting from this particular point. So when I am moving like this, I am moving from negative terminal to positive terminal of the battery. So there is a rise in potential and battery voltage should be marked as positive so it will be plus 60 and so when I am moving like this the next component that I will see is this 7 ohm resistor and for this 7 ohm resistor the direction in which I am moving and the direction of flow of I1 are the same so there is a drop in potential in this 7 ohm resistor and the voltage drop across the 7 ohm resistor should be marked as negative. So minus and that voltage drop is 7 into I1. I into R. Voltage drop is I into R. That is I1 into 7 or 7 I1. It will be 7 I1. Now the next component is this 12 ohm resistor. So I am moving like this. I1 is also flowing in the same direction. So voltage drop across 12 ohm resistor due to I1 will be negative and that will be minus 12 into I1. Now this resistor 12 ohm is common to both loop 1 as well as loop 2. Therefore this current I2, current of loop 2 that is I2 will also flow through this 12 ohm resistor. And I am tracing loop 1 in the clockwise direction that is I am moving like this. But current I2 is flowing in the opposite direction. So voltage drop across this 12 ohm resistor due to this current I2 will be positive and that is plus 12 into I2. 12 into I2 and according to Kirchhoff's voltage law the algebraic sum of all the voltages in a closed mesh equals 0. So voltage algebraic sum of voltages is equal to 0. So we have got the KVL equation corresponding to mesh number 1 and now we have to rearrange this equation in such a way that all the terms containing I1, I2 and I3, the unknown currents are on the left hand side and the constant voltage term is on the right hand side. So when rearranging I will get minus 12 minus 7 that is minus 19 I1 plus 12 I2 is equal to minus 60 or this, e this equation can be represented like this or otherwise it can be 19 I1 minus 12 I2 is equal to 60 multiplying throughout by a negative sign. So 19 I1 minus 12 I2 is equal to 60 and mark it as equation number 1. So thereafter consider loop 2 and apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. So considering loop 2, 
the client KVL to loop 2. So we'll get. So here also I am going to trace loop 2 in the clockwise direction. So I will be starting from this particular point. So when I am moving like this, the first component is this 12 ohm resistor and I am moving in this direction. The current I2 is also flowing in the same direction. So voltage drop across this 12 ohm resistor due to I2 will be negative and that is minus 12 into I2. So minus 12 I2 and as this 12 ohm resistor is common to both loop 1 as well as loop 2, current I1 will also flow through this 12 ohm resistor. So I am tracing loop 2 in this direction but I1 is flowing in the opposite direction. So voltage drop across 12 ohm resistor due to I1 will be positive. So plus 12 into I1. The next component of loop 2 is this 6 ohm resistor. So I am tracing the circuit in this direction. I2 is also flowing in the same direction. So drop across 6 ohm resistor due to I2 will be negative. So that will be minus 6 into I2. Minus 6 into I2. Now this resistor 6 ohm is common to loop 2 as well as loop 3. So current I3 will also flow through this 6 ohm resistor. So I am tracing loop 2 in this direction but I3 is flowing in the opposite direction. So voltage drop across 6 ohm resistor due to I3 will be positive that, and that is plus 6 into I3. So plus 6 into I3 will be equal to 0. Algebraic sum of all the voltages around a closed mesh will be equal to 0 according to Kirchhoff's voltage law. So now we have to rearrange this equation such that constant terms are on the right hand side and the variable terms containing I1, I2 and I3 on the left hand side. So here 12 I1 minus 12 minus 6 minus 18 I2 plus 6 I3. So 12 I1 minus 18 I2 plus 6 I3 equal to 0. So this is our equation number 2. So we have considered mesh 1 and mesh 2. Now we have to consider the last mesh that is mesh number 3. So now let us move on to loop 3. So consider loop 3 and apply KVL. So I will be tracing loop 3 also in the clockwise direction. So let us start from this particular point. So I am moving like this and first component is this 6 ohm resistor. So I am moving in this direction and I3 is also flowing in the same direction. So drop across 6 ohm due to I3 will be negative. So minus 6 into I3. And as I ask this 6 ohm resistor is common to both loop number 3 and loop number 2, current I2 will also flow through this 6 ohm resistor. So the direction in which I am moving and the direction of I2 are opposite. So drop across 6 ohm resistor due to I2 will be positive. So it will be plus 6 into I2. And the next component is this 12 ohm resistor. So I am tracing the circuit in clockwise direction. I3 is also flowing in the same direction. So drop across 12 ohm due to I3 will be negative as there is a drop in potential. So minus 12 into I3. And according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, Algebraic sum of all the voltages is 0. So this will be equal to 0. Now let us rearrange the equation as 6 I2 minus 18 I3 is equal to 0. So we have got 3 equations. So we have 3 equations and 3 unknowns I1, I2 and I3. So we can solve these 3 equations using Cramer's rule. So we have already solved 
some of the problems using Kramer's rule. So in order to apply Kramer's rule, first of all we have to represent these three equations in a matrix form. Okay. So matrix form means a resistance matrix into a current matrix is equal to a voltage matrix. So as we have three equations here, resistance matrix will be of order 3 by 3. So first row of the resistance matrix should be written from the first equation, equation number 1. So first row, first element will be the coefficient of I1 that is 90. Second element is coefficient of I2 that is minus 12. And third element will be coefficient of I3 here. No term containing I3 is there. So coefficient can be written as 0. And second row should be written from the second equation. So first element is coefficient of I1 that is 12. Second element is coefficient of I2. So in second equation this is I2. Okay. So coefficient of I2 is minus 18. And third element is coefficient of I3 that is 6. And third row should be written from the third equation. So there is no term containing I1. So this will be 0. This term should be the coefficient of I2 that is 6. And coefficient of I3 is minus 18. Into the unknown currents I1, I2 and I3 is equal to the voltage matrix that is the constant voltage terms on the right hand side. So they are 60, 0, 0. So 60, 0, 0. So this is the matrix representation of this particular equation. So now let us calculate the currents I1, I2 and I3 by applying Kramer's rule. So according to Kramer's rule, the current I1 can be calculated as the ratio of two determinants. That is delta 1, I1 is equal to delta 1 divided by delta, where delta 1 is the determinant of that matrix which is obtained by replacing the first column of the resistance matrix by the voltage matrix. So we have to, in order to get delta 1, we have to replace this first column by the voltage matrix. So the matrix that we obtain will be, first column is the voltage matrix that is 60, 0, 0. Second and third columns as such, that is minus 12, 0, minus 18, 6, 6, minus 8. So we will get a matrix like this and determinant of this matrix is delta 1. So determinant of this matrix divided by delta. Delta is the determinant of the original resistance matrix. That is determinant of 19, 12, 0, minus 12, minus 18, 6 and 0, 6, 18. So you know how to calculate the determinant of a matrix. So calculate the determinant of this matrix then divide it by the determinant of this matrix. So you can do it by yourself. Then on calculating this you will get the value of I1 as 6 ampere. So answer will be 6 ampere. So I1 is delta 1 divided by delta and delta 1 is the determinant of that matrix which is obtained by replacing first column of the resistance matrix by the voltage matrix. See. So now let us cal go for calculating I2. So I2 is equal to delta 2 by delta where delta 2 is again the determinant, sorry delta. This denominator delta again denotes the determinant of original resistance matrix and delta 2 is the determinant of that matrix which is obtained by replacing the second column. That is we have to calculate delta 2. So for that replace the second 2. 
So replace the second column by the voltage matrix and take the determinant of the resulting matrix. Then we will get delta 2. So delta 2 is the determinant of that matrix which is obtained by replacing the second column of the resistance matrix by the voltage matrix. So delta 2 will be determinant of first column as such 19, 12, 0 replace the second column by the voltage matrix. So second column will be 60, 0, 0 and third column as such 0, 6, minus 18. So determinant of this matrix will give delta 2. Delta 2 divided by delta that is determinant of original resistance matrix we will get the value of I2. And on solving this value of I2 that you are going to obtain is 4.5 ampere. Okay. So now we have to calculate the last unknown current that is I3. So I3 will be equal to delta 3 divided by delta. Delta is again the determinant of the original resistance matrix and delta 3 is the determinant of that matrix which is obtained by replacing the third column of the resistance matrix by the voltage matrix. So this was our original resistance matrix. So first two columns as such 19, 12, 0, minus 12, minus 18, 6 and replace the third column using the voltage matrix. And our voltage matrix was 60, 0 and 0 divided by delta we will get the value of I3. Determinant of this particular matrix divided by determinant of original resistance matrix, we will get the value of current I3 and that will be 1.5 ampere. So we have got all the loop currents I1, I2 and I3. I1 is equal to 6 ampere, I2 is equal to 4.5 ampere and I3 is equal to 1.5 ampere. So here we have been asked to solve this particular circuit. So solving the circuit means we can calculate the current flowing through all the branches. Okay. So current flowing through all the branches we can calculate. So here, see, current flowing through this 6 volt battery, sorry this 60 volt battery is the current I1 itself. So we know the value. Now current flowing through this 7 ohm resistor is also I1. Now current flowing through this 12 ohm resistor. See I1 in the downward direction and I2 in the upward direction. So current flowing through this 12 ohm resistor will be I1 minus I2 that is 6 minus 4.5 that is 1.5 ampere will be flowing through this 12 ohm resistor. Next component, next branch or next component is this 6 ohm resistor and current flowing through it is I2 in the downward direction and I3 in the upward direction. So I2 minus I3 is the current flowing through this 6 ohm resistor that is 4.5 minus 1.5 that is the current flowing through this 6 ohm resistor. Now the last component is this 12 ohm resistor and current flowing through it is I3 that is 1.5 ampere. So likewise we can calculate the current flowing through all the branches of this particular circuit.